On Sunday, with 14 seconds left in the game against the Packers, the Buccaneers scored a touchdown, giving them a chance to tie if they could convert two points. But the two-point conversion didn't work out the way they'd planned. Tampa Bay got a delay of game penalty and had to go back to the seven-yard line. In an interview after the game, Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers said that he saw something on the jumbotron at Raymond James Stadium about how the Bucs were set up, and he told the Packers coach about it, kicking us off a brief highlight of the game in question. Forget Aaron Rodgers versus Tom Brady. Defense wins championship. And on Sunday, two championship-level defenses got into a hot fight. At Raymond James Stadium, the Green Bay Packers barely beat the Tampa Bay Buccaneers 14-12. They were stumbling and holding on for dear life, but they did it. The Buccaneers scored a late touchdown, and Russell Gage took a big hit from Rasul Douglas with 14 seconds left. This was a typical Brady play. On a two-point play that could win or tie the game, the Buccaneers were called for delaying the game. It was a huge, easy mistake made by the famous quarterback. When the ball was moved back to the seven, Brady went back to his favorite receiver, Gage, but linebacker Devondre Campbell, who is 6 feet 4 inches tall, made a leaping interception. Alan Lazarus caught the onside kick, and the Packers, 2-1, beat the powerful Buccaneers, 2-1, by one point in a game that could have a big impact on the NFC playoffs. Definitely feels good, Rogers said. Beating a team like this could lead to tiebreakers in the future, but it's only week three. The Packers looked like they were going to get a quick win. This time, it was the Buccaneers who were down to their last chance, but a fumble by Aaron Jones saved them. From from there, it was like trench warfare from World War I. Yards were hard to come by. Big plays were non-existent. Every first down felt like a huge step forward. The Packers will return to Lambeau Field to host the New England Patriots next Sunday. Kickoff is set for 3.25 p.m. Next, Aaron Rodgers' Jumbotron claim sends NFL into a spin. Aaron Rodgers said something on live TV that made the team he beat over the weekend want to meet behind closed doors. After the Packers beat the Buccaneers 14-12 on Sunday and Tampa Bay missed a two-point conversion that would have tied the game, Rodgers told Fox's Tom Rinaldi that the big screen at Raymond James Stadium probably shouldn't have shown what it did. When asked what he was talking about, he said that he knew what play Tampa Bay was going to run because of something he saw on the Jumbotron. Rodgers said, They showed it in the last play, too. Both plays were slowed down. But sometimes in the game, you see things. Even at home, the Jumbotron might show things that shouldn't be shown. When asked about the comment on Tuesday, Bucks head coach Todd Bowles said, I saw something and just told them about it. And Bowles said the team would meet this afternoon to try to figure out what happened. When asked what the Packers could have learned from the big screen, Bowles didn't seem to have any answers. I'm not sure, Bowles said. I have to see it and talk to the people first. Rodgers didn't say what he saw on the big screen that gave the Packers an edge, but he was seen talking to Green Bay head coach Matt LaFleur about something as the Bucks lined up for a two-point try. Tampa Bay ended up getting a delay of game penalty, and the Packers' next play call was a perfect defense, as Tom Brady's pass meant for Russell Gage fell to the ground without doing any damage. The loss dropped the Bucks' record to 2-1, and one, and the Packers' win put them at the same point. As of Wednesday, it wasn't clear whether the Bucks had any new information to share at their meeting. Anyway, Aaron Rodgers said earlier that he probably won't play at 45 like Tom Brady does. Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady have changed what it means to be a quarterback in the 21st century. Rodgers, who is 38, just won the MVP award for the second year in a row. He beat out Brady, who is 45, for the last one because the Buccaneers quarterback had one of the best statistical seasons of his long and successful career. Even though both quarterbacks are getting close to the end of their careers, they look about as good as they ever have. Rodgers also made a big commitment to the Packers this offseason by signing a new deal that could keep him with the team until 2026, when he would be 43 years old. It doesn't seem crazy to think that Rodgers could be as good as Brady, who is supposed to retire at the end of the season. Rodgers hasn't set a clear end date for his career, but he probably won't last as long as his Buccaneers teammate. According to the Washington State Journal, when asked if he would play until he was 45, Rodgers said, no, I won't. I'll be doing something else. I'm interested in a lot of things beside the game. I've had a great time with the game. I feel like I've given the game my all, Rogers said. At some point, it will be time to do something else, and I'm pretty sure that time will come before I'm 45. He left the door open, but he also has been thinking about retirement in recent years before deciding to stay with the Packers and sign a huge new contract. He is signed through 2022 and will try to tie Tom Brady's all-time record on Sunday. Brady is 3-1 against Rodgers, and he won the NFC Championship in 2020 at Lambeau Field, which helped him win Super Bowl 55. In other news, Aaron Rodgers says that Bill Belichick is the best coach in the NFL's history. Since 2005, when he joined the NFL, Aaron Rodgers has seen a lot of football, and he thinks it's clear who the best coach in the history of the league is. The Packers quarterback went on the Pat McAfee show to talk about why he thinks Bill Belichick is the best coach in NFL history. Rodgers said, He's a legend, a living legend, and he's always been ahead of the game. He makes great changes during the game, at halftime in the third quarter, in the fourth quarter, whatever it takes.
picks. Rodgers has started at quarterback twice against the Patriots, so he has a unique view of how hard it is to play against their defense when Belichick is in charge. Rodgers said, They're always mixing up. There are different fronts. The Packers and Patriots are getting ready to play each other this week for the first time in four years. Since Rodgers has become a starter, he and Belichick have only played each other twice. In 2014, the Packers won, and in 2018, the Patriots won. In 2010, Matt Flynn played for the Packers because Rodgers was hurt. In three games against Belichick's defense, Rodgers has thrown for 659 yards, four touchdowns, and no interceptions. In 2006, when the Patriots beat Green Bay 35-0, Rodgers came in for Brett Favre. He also started two games against the Patriots. Lastly, Jameis Winston did not practice with the Saints in London. When the Vikings play the Saints on Sunday at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, some key players might not be there. Dalvin Cook, a star running back for Minnesota, is day-to-day -day with a shoulder injury. Jameis Winston, a quarterback for New Orleans, is still dealing with a painful back injury and was not at the team's practice in London on Wednesday. Winston has hurt his back and ankle, which has kept him from doing much over the past few weeks. Jay Glazer from Fox Sports said Winston has four fractures in his back, which are painful but don't pose a risk of getting worse. Winston didn't play on Wednesday, which was a rest day last week. This week, he and wide receiver Michael Thomas and offensive tackle Ryan Ramchick did not play at all. Stacey Dales of NFL Network said that Winston's coach, Dennis Allen, confirmed that he wasn't there after Wednesday's practice. Allen said it was again a scheduled rest day for the quarterback and that Winston should be back on the field on Thursday. This week, Winston's absence meant that the Saints had to make some changes to their practice plan. Jeff Duncan of the times Picayune says that Andy Dalton was quarterback one at Wednesday's practice and Taysom Hill moved over from his tight end position to take some backup quarterback snaps as well. Duncan says this is different from how the Saints have been practicing in the past few weeks. Winston is the only Saints quarterback to throw a pass through the first three weeks. He has completed 73 of 115 passes for 858 yards, four touchdowns, and five picks. The 22-14 loss to Carolina last Sunday put New Orleans at 1-2. The Saints and the Vikings will start the game at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time on October 2nd, Sunday, in London. Unfortunately, guys, that is all the time we had for today. For more NFL news, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel. Till next time, cheers!